Good morning. I hope you're doing good. It's been a while since I've done a life update, but I figured I'd do my life update while dyeing my hair. So today, I don't think I've done ever done L'Oreal Excellent Cream. So I'm gonna try this today. I really do like L'Oreal. I like their conditioner, basically. This color is called Dark Chocolate Brown. And please excuse my throat, I'm getting over a cold. But I feel a lot better. It's just my voice makes it sound like I'm not. I am getting better. So this is also called 4AR for anyone that's interested. I went to the grocery store and nothing was on sale. Usually I shop the sales or I have a coupon, but I didn't have either. So this is the one I thought was the best one. So we have this and the conditioner, which I love. These are the tubes that I like. Do I have the other one? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't have it. Garnier has like the worst conditioner tubes. These, I, I love these ones. And their conditioner seems to be better. I used Garnier the last two times and my hair has just been like dead. So I'm hoping it'll get re revived. Actually, this is not the, this is the color cream. This is the conditioner. So just kidding. And what else do we have? Pre-color treatment serum protector. Used before coloring helps protect fragile hair. I didn't even realize it, that, but I need that right now because my hair is like dead. Okay, and then we have this little thing. So that's pretty cool. I've never used this one before. It's definitely a little different. So pre-color treat with ceramide. Ceramide protects and primes hair for even color results. Developers one, developers number two. Developers number one, two is color cream, and three is the conditioner. And this is the colors. So my hair is more like this right now, so it should end up looking like that. All right. So yeah, life update. So as most of you guys know, I got a job as a PE teacher a couple months ago, and everything was going great. I was only only trouble I had was first grade. They were just wild, wild. And I, I brought it up to the office a couple times saying, I'm really struggling with your first grade. Any, any tips, anything like that? And, we're, you know, basically we're short staffed. I'm sorry, we can't really help you. And I'm just like, okay. So second through fifth, you know, the kids basically listen. We have, you know, we'd have issues with like some kids that would like talk back or say bad words, like fourth and fifth graders. But first grade was chaotic. They would just run around and goof off and not listen. I I had a wireless microphone and I, I couldn't get control of them. I don't know if I'm just like not specialized in first graders, but there was 37 year olds. Now some of them did listen, like maybe like eight of them. And I'd be trying to explain how to play the game and they'd be talking over me and it was just a mess. So let me go ahead and read how to do this because I've never used this one before. Use the pre-color treatment on dry, unwashed hair. Massage product into dry ends before coloring. Avoid the root area. Okay. Do not rinse. The pre-treatment should not be applied to the mid-lengths and ends if this is the first time coloring. It's not my first time coloring. Is that what it means? All right, so I'm just going to avoid my roots. So we could screw this. we'll screw this up together, possibly. My worst first grade class was the certain teacher's class. And I would bring it up to her every time and she'd be like, well, message the parents or call the parents. Like she basically wanted me to stop my whole class and go into my office and call parents. And I brought that up to the principal and she's like, you can't do that. I'm like, well, that's what I figured, but this is what she's telling me to do. And um, <clears throat> because I was a PE teacher with like no credentials, I, and they don't get graded at the school for PE. So I had no access to any of their stuff because I'm not grading them. I had no access to their parents, nothing. So I, I couldn't do that. So I just kept, you know, bringing it up to her. So maybe she could bring it up to the parents and we could try to figure it out, <clears throat> a solution. But it was just first grade. 
So one day our class is getting in line and this kid sticks his finger in a, the, the electrical socket. You know, he doesn't get hurt, but he's like playing with it and then it pops and breaks. Not, not the electric didn't pop, like this plastic piece popped to be clear. So he was not injured in any way. So I'm telling her about it because we're literally lining up and he's messing with it and she's walking up and I'm like, he's just, just want to let you know, like, you know, he's playing with electrical socket. Because most of these teachers, they would just, you you know, take points away or class money. And she was like, well, he needs to go to the office. And I'm just like, okay. And it was the end of the day. And so she made it seem like, you know, he was going to go with her and she'd drop him off at the office because her classroom is on the way to the office. So it would make sense that she's going to take him and drop him off at the office on her way. And he was with her in her line and she's leaving. And so I'm like, okay, I'll call on the radio. So I called on the radio to let them know that this kid was coming to the office and what he did. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm getting my stuff because I have to get over to the buses and load the buses at the end of the day. So I get my stuff and all this, as I walk out the door to go towards the office where we load the buses, the principal is like panicking, like, he's missing, he's missing. And I'm just like, who? And they're like, you know, they said the kid's name. And I'm like, he was just in his teacher's line going to see you. And she's like, well, he didn't show up. He's not there. And so I was just really, really, really said, don't do the roots, whatever. I'm just having a bad week anyway. We'll see what happens. So I, uh, what well, wasn't technically the roots is kind of under there. So I'm just like really, really confused. And then at the end, and then. The principal's like screaming at me that they found him and whatnot. And you do not ever le let a first grader leave, you know, the gym without somebody. And I was just like, he was in her line and she's just like yelling at me. And this other teacher walked by and she's like, you're you know, you're doing a good job, right? Because I'm like about to cry. So then I start crying and I'm like trying to like get myself together because kids are about to come out the walking door and load the bus. And I also watch the walkers. And so that teacher made me feel a lot better. And I was just really confused. And then, you know, me and Miss Peeler ended up talking to the parent because the parent was right outside the door because this kid was a walker. And Miss Peeler tells me that this kid was in her, her classroom the whole time, like hiding in a corner and they couldn't get him to come out. And I was just like, okay, so he was never missing. And then the teacher, the principal just gave me a lot of crap for that. So I was just really, really confused. So a job ended up opening up for the librarian. She, she left to go do a different job. And so I was like, okay, librarian is more fit for me. It's actually called a media aid at the school. So you have to know how to do social media and pictures and photography and, you know, filming and, you you know, you run their social media website and, and everything. And I've been doing that for like 20 years. I have a lot of experience in that. And so I applied because I don't have any experience to be a PE teacher. So if you're just, if you're just now coming to my channel, I did not want to be a PE teacher. I applied to be a recess aide and the principal kept pushing me to be a PE teacher like more than four times. So I went there for the to interview for the recess aid, and she's like, you can also be a PE teacher. I'm like, I don't have a degree in that. And she's like, doesn't matter. They're not graded. You could be a PE teacher. I'm like, no, I really just don't feel like that's for me. And then she just kept pushing it towards me. And then I was like, I'm also overweight, and I don't really feel comfortable teaching kids. I, I'm like, I am losing weight, but I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm fit and healthy enough to be teaching kids about that and things like that. And... Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, no. So finally she just lets it go and lets me be hired for a recess aid. And I go, and then she calls me later that day. And I was like, oh, we just wanted to let you know that we decided you're going to be our new PE teacher. And I'm just like on the phone with her like, no, 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 no. I said, I'm not interested in that. And then she was like, oh, is, is this Jillian? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I called the wrong person, which I think was not the wrong person. I think she was messing with me. So anyways, I, um, I was like, well, that's okay. I'm glad that you found somebody. I've actually talked about this in a, a, a past video. So I go, I go to the office to fill out, you know, new hire paperwork and things like that. 
This was after like a long time of background checks and everything like that. So I'm opening this up. Let's see. Oh, it's already ready to go. Cool. So I'm just going to put this in here. So is it coming out okay or do I need to do something fancy? Yeah. I think I need to break it. Yeah. So I went to go fill out the new hire paperwork and the lady's like, you know that the PE position is still available. I'm like, yeah, I'm just not interested in that. I think being a recess aide will be a lot easier. And she's like, oh, you think being a recess aide will be easier than being a PE teacher? I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, no, it's it's way easier to be the PE teacher. And she's just started telling me all these things. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And then I said, okay, well, I'll just be the PE teacher, basically. So, she, you know, called the principal. It got approved. I was the PE teacher. Then I went to train at this other school for two days and all the teacher taught me was how to play games. She didn't teach me about kids running out of the gym or first graders being hurt, you know, it was just, and then kids were like getting injured every day that I was being trained with her and they would just go to the nurse's office and this one kid like tripped and had to be put in a wheelchair because he had Crocs on and so it just seemed like a normal thing for kids to go to the nurse. And a lot of these kids, they're not even like that injured. They just, I feel like they like to go to the nurse, if that makes any sense. They just, they're getting out of class. They're just, they're just, it's not, I have two boys. And so I'm not being like, you know, it's just, you can tell when a kid is, not really hurt you know they're just playing the game i don't know how to explain it but if you're a mom and you understand me then you understand me so that just seemed like a part of being a gym where every day the kids some kids are going to go with a nurse to get a band-aid for nothing that's there or get an ice pack because you know the, the dodgeball hit him in the face and these dodgeballs are made the gator balls are made to not sting not hurt the kid they're like really well made so that nobody gets hurt. So it just, the kids kept going to the nurse with me, like, you know, a little, you know, you know, they hit the dodgeball or whatever. I would send them to the nurse. No one ever had to go to the hospital. No one ever was seriously injured. It was just little tiny things. So the principal said that parents were complaining about dodgeball, like their kids were going home and saying they got hurt, went to the nurse. And so she asked me not to play dodgeball anymore. So I stopped, but there's no game that I could play with these kids that somebody wasn't getting hurt. Not hospital hurt, not seriously injured. No one was ever wheelchaired with me like that other school. Just, you know, little boinks in the head where there's no mark, no bruise, no, no anything. So stop playing dodgeball, but every game that I play with these kids, somebody managed to injured themselves somehow I even had a conversation with a nurse not long ago where I'm like you know I just feel like they just want to see you and she's like yeah I feel the same way like I'm glad we're, we're you know we're on the same page and she's like I feel bad for saying that but yeah that's how I feel too and I was like okay so anyways I applied for this library position and the and then I, I let the principal know because I see her in the hallway you know did she get what I get and should I send her anything else she's like no I think what you sent was perfect and, you know, she just seemed to have, like, a weird attitude. And then after that day, she was, like, really picking on me. Um, my kids had been opening the, the doors to the school for, like, two months. So I would be loading the buses. They'd be holding the door open to the school. And I'd be over here near my kid escorting the kids to the bus. It was just easier. Because if I'm holding the door, they're going to start running and be stupid. Or if I'm here, my kid's holding, holding the door... I can make sure they're following directions. So I think it was like that day or a few days after I'm outside and she yells, you need to hold the door. And I was like, my son's holding the door. She's like, you, she screams, you need to hold it. I'm like, whoa, okay. So, you know, my son, Har my son Harvey is just like, what is happening? And so I, hold the door. And it was funny because that same day, Aiden was very sick. And I told her, 
as um, when we first got there, she was going out the door to the buses. And I told her, because she looked at Aiden, he looked like miserable on the floor, like he was going to die. And I was like, he's just really not feeling well right now. And he was just at the nurse's office and Aiden will not go to the nurse unless something is like seriously wrong. He just doesn't like that kind of attention at all. And so I knew when he went to the nurse, like it was pretty serious. It was the end of the day. I had two more classes to teach, so I couldn't just go take my son home or so I was just like, you know, trying just to get through the day. So I'm just like, he's really sick. And he was just like sitting there miserable. And she just starts laughing. She's like, <laughs> and I was like, I looked at Harvey and the other student that was there helping. And I was just like, that was kind of a weird thing to laugh at, but okay. And uh, so then we went to the other side and that's when she had screamed at me to hold the door. So I went and hold the door. And then not long after the kids start running out of the of the school to go to the bus and they're like, your son's throwing up, your son's throwing up. And I was like, I get on the radio, I'm like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, but my son Aiden is throwing up in the hallway. I was trying to let you know that he was sick and I'm not sure what you want me to do. And then she's just like, what? So I basically repeated this and my son was just at the nurse's office. I was trying to tell you that he was sick and I'm not sure what me to do, but I was just told that he's throwing up in the hallway. So she's like, ah. Well, I guess you have to go now. And I was just like, okay. So I felt so bad, like Aiden threw up everywhere. And um, so they had to call the custodians to clean it up. And she was being so dramatic. Have the kids go out the other door now so they don't have to see that. And it's just like, it's not like it was blood. It's just, it wasn't that bad. So, I mean, it was like a little pile like this big and looked like oatmeal. It wasn't that, I don't know. I guess it depends on the person. But I just didn't think it was... It wasn't in the way of the kids. It could have just, I don't know, whatever. So, um, I take them home and I clock out. And that was that day. So, she would just pick on me for little things. I don't know. I took notes, but I don't have them right now with this video. But some of my friends told me that I should just start taking notes. So, I did. And then this last week, Monday through Friday of last week was so good. Like I, she, she was missing on Monday and I didn't see her at all Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday. Like everything was, everything was fine. I just stayed clear of her and we had no real issues at all that I can think of. And so I was like, okay, well maybe this will be fine. Maybe, maybe it was just a rough week and we're good to go now. So, I was sick this whole time. So, I really kind of regret not using my sick time and taking it. Because I, we get like 50 hours and I just thought, well, maybe I'll be sicker later on in the year and I'll really need it. Like throwing up or something. And so, I didn't want to use them because they said they roll over. But I regret it now. So, on Friday at the very, my very last class, which is the same class with the other kid that was putting his hand in electric socket, same teacher, we were playing Sharks and Minnows, which is a game where the kids basically run and get tagged. And these two kids ran into each other. The one kid just ran out of the gym. And so I ran after him. And I said, you can't go to the nurse by yourself. I have to call someone. Literally, I could see through the gym door glass while I'm telling this kid that he needs to get back to the gym so literally eight seconds, I get the kid, get back to the gym. All the kids are sitting on the stairs because after he got hurt, I said, everyone sit on the stairs. I need to go get him. And they listened. I mean, some of them were standing up and jumping off the stairs and stuff like that, but they listened. And um, so then I called the nurse on the radio to come and get them. And then I figured, you know, that was it. There's no issues. So I go to load the buses at the end of the day, like I always do. And at the very end, she says, I need to see you in my office at the end of the day after we're done loading the buses. And I was just like, okay. And I was thinking, oh, maybe it's nothing, you know, but <laughs> it was something. So I go back there and the HR guy is in her office and she's in her office and I mean, literally, that was my last class. So she had to have called the guy like at, what, 
three three oh eight, and he was there by I guess three forty. So I don't think it was pre-planned. I don't know because I had a really good week. But she said since I left the gym to go right here to tell the kid to come back to the gym that I left all these kids in the gym alone and that with that happening and the last thing with the other kid with the um, electric socket when he was supposed to be with that teacher that it was enough for me to be forced to resign and she said also you applied for library so it just shows that you're not happy in your position and we know that you know you didn't sign up to be a PE teacher, but you kind of felt like you needed to be because of us and that, you know, it was probably best that we just part ways. And I was just so confused. And then I was thinking with my, on the couch last night, it just came to me, the kid with electric socket, if I had not thought that his teacher, who he was in her line, was going to take him to the office, I would have taken him. Because I had no more classes. It was the end of the day. I was going that way. I'm lost. <laughs> I am so, so, so confused. I'm also very confused why I couldn't just go out the gym door for a minute. Not even a minute. Seconds, literally. I'm just, I'm in shock. I mean, I have, I have two boys and, you know, so I, I don't ever want to endanger them. And I would never endanger kids ever. And so, yeah, that's why I don't have a job anymore there. And then my son Aiden has been begging to be homeschooled for years. And he got straight A's and I just finally was like, okay, fine. Harvey wanted to stay at the school, which is fine. He is a really great teacher, and maybe next year he won't be going back. But, um, so yeah, it'll probably be uploading more YouTube videos. And this is what I'm actually passionate about, though. I'm passionate about YouTube. I'm passionate about making videos and, and you know, creating things. I'm artistic, you know, and I never claim to be a gym teacher. I don't want to do it. And it sucks because now I can't work there at all. I mean, I'm not like, I wasn't fired. I technically resigned, but if I had just got the job that I wanted and didn't let them get in my head, I would still be there. And that's what really sucks. Because I really did like the recess aides. I actually, you know, kind of was around them every day and they're all very, very sweet. And that's the weird thing with the school. It's like, they don't have any real PE teachers. They don't have any real librarians. You know, most librarians, they have to have a degree. So all these teacher, all these extracurricular teachers are called aides, you know, recess aid, media aid, you know, PE teacher aid. It's just, it's weird. And I'm just really confused as to why I was fired for something like that when they are so short staffed. Because I had said repeatedly that I needed help with first grade. All the other grades were on do I was doing great with. I didn't have any issues, you know. But it is what it is. Just wasn't a job that I was meant to do, I guess. But I felt like the time that I was there, I did a really, really good job. I created new games because, you know, I went to Second City for improv. So I created games that didn't exist. You know, I... When they wanted to play steal the bacon instead of actually having an eraser, I got real bacon from online, like a toy that you could stretch. And the kids just loved it. I created a memory game um, with like Halloween flashcards where they have to use scooters to go over and like flip the cards over. We played basketball, like obviously everyone knows basketball is, but you know, I would, I would mix it up. It was very random. It wasn't like they were always playing the same thing and I wasn't like a mean PE teacher, you know, I was always like, you just, you try your best, you know, you, and then this one boy, he was like a little overweight. He's a third grader. He was just like, I'm sorry. I couldn't, you know, go as fast as everyone else. And I was like, that's no problem. He's like, well, the last PE teacher, she really gave me a hard time about it. She was really mean that, you know, she said that I wasn't, you know, like wasn't strong enough or something like that. And I was just like, that is really something kind of weird to say to a, 
a seven-year-old because he would have been seven at the time that she was there. So I, I found really, I found like a lot of comfort in knowing that as a PE teacher there, that I was not shaming these kids, you know, not making them feel less just because of, you know, they might be a little overweight or not as active or, you know. So, I mean, I feel like I did a really good job and she never watched one of my classes. She never saw how I ran it, nothing. <laughs> nothing. She doesn't know anything about how I treated the kids while I was running the class, doesn't know anything about anything. Just those two situations. And then after I applied for librarian, she just got really, really cranky. So, and I was telling my husband, oh, I've never lied to a day in my life because, you know, that's not healthy marriage anyways. It almost sounds like I'm lying. <laughs> like the reason why I was resigned because it makes no sense. But everything happens for a reason and whatever. It's taking me, it happened on Friday and I was like, I don't even know if I'm gonna upload a video on YouTube. I might just never tell anybody, but I've had time to process it and I feel a little better, but I'm gonna miss those kids a lot. Like I, I, I'm really like, I feel like I lost like so many kids. I just loved and I was like, they're gonna feel like I abandoned them. I said it when I was having to resign, I'm like, I'm gonna miss them a lot. She's like. Nah, kids are resilient. They're not, they'll be fine. I'm just like, okay. And then she's like, you can still come, you know, come in school and, you know, you know, volunteer and things like that. And I'm just like, this feels so weird. This felt really weird. And I just like, don't even want to show my face in the school anymore. I don't want these kids to see me and think I abandoned them. And I'm just, I'm just having a lot of tri trouble, pro you know, processing it. Because I didn't do anything. I don't feel like I did anything worth being a fire. Maybe corrected, you know, but not, not like that. It's just really weird. And they're so short staffed. It makes no sense. Like, okay, I don't, don't give me the librarian position. They, they hired somebody else. That's fine. I just don't get why I have to be bullied now that I asked to do something else that would fit me better. But it's whatever. So here we are. I'm dyeing my hair, trying to just brighten up the mood and make myself feel better. So we have like how much time left? Do, 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 do. So all over color, 30 minutes. Okay. So what I like to do when I do, actually, I usually do this at the end. Uh, yeah, I'll do this at the end, actually. Cause it makes no sense for me to put this on and then wash my face and then I won't have it. Cause these face masks are cool. You put them on and then you leave them on for 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes. And then you peel them off and you just rub, you know, the rest into your face. But if I were to do that, I'm just going to wash it off. So we'll do that after. So I will see you guys in 30 minutes. It looks like it's coming along pretty good. So I don't think I missed any spots. And I'm getting a haircut on Monday, November 7th. I don't know what kind of haircut I'm getting yet. I know it won't be super short, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna get my hair cut. I don't know if it'll just be like a trim. Hey everyone, it's about 24 hours later and this is what my hair looks like. I think it came out pretty good. It's making my eyes pop. So if you're interested in getting this color, this is my results. I really like it and I got this new shirt. So we're out celebrating our 11th wedding anniversary. Hello. Hello. The boys. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.